Section 6.3 is the properties of trigonometric functions. I would pause the video and write down these notes. So we have six trig functions that we talk about in this class. Sine of theta, cosine of theta, tangent of theta, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. So if you have some point x, y, and a radius of r, if you're on the unit circle, remember your radius is 1, then sine of theta is y over r, cosine is x over r, tangent is y over x, cotangent is x over y, secant is r over x, and cosecant is r over y. Now we're going to talk about the domains and ranges of the six trig functions. The first two we have up are sine and cosine, which share the same domains and ranges. So both of these are, their ratios are over r. r is a radius, so it's never going to be zero. So that means the domains are all real numbers. So on both of these, you can plug in any angle theta. We're talking about theta here. Any angle theta into the domain. For the ranges, both of these have ranges of negative 1 to 1 included. If you think of a unit circle for sine, what is the biggest your y-coordinate ever ends up being if you look at a unit circle? Well, that would be at the top at pi over 2, and that's a y-coordinate of 1. That's why our range is maxes out at 1. The lowest it's ever going to be is at 3 pi over 2, which is negative 1. That's why our range minimizes at negative 1. Similarly with cosine, it maxes out at 0 or 2 pi with an x-coordinate of 1 and it minimizes at pi with a x coordinate of negative 1. So those are the domains and ranges for sine and cosine. So now we have the domains and ranges of tangent and cotangent. For both of these, the range is all real numbers. You're going to get all possible answers out of those ratios. For the domains, they're a little bit different. So for tangent, the ratio for tangent is y over x. So that means because we're looking at the domain in terms of theta, we can't have any angle that would make our x-coordinate be 0. So where are our x-coordinates 0? Well, that's on the y-axis. So our angles that are on the y-axis, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, negative 7 pi over 2, those we can't have. So our, the way that we write that is that theta can't be pi over 2, that's that 1 at the top, plus any multiple of pi, any integer, so k is an integer, that's what it says right here, any integer multiple of pi. So that includes, you know, if you add 1 pi, you get 3 pi over 2. If you subtract 2 pi, you get negative 3 pi over 2. So that includes all those possibilities where you're either at the top of the unit circle or the bottom of the unit circle. Similarly, cotangent is x over y, so you can't have any angle that would make your y coordinate 0. So where's your y coordinate 0? Well, that's at your x-axis. So 0, 2 pi, 3 pi, negative 17 pi. So the way that we denote the domain is that 0 cannot equal any integer, that's what defines here, any integer multiple of pi. Our last two are secant and cosecant. Secant has the same domain as tangent. Because you have an x in the denominator again, whatever makes x 0, you can't have those angles. So you get the same domain for tangent as you do for secant. And then similarly cosecant, because you also have a y in the denominator, you're going to get the same domain as cotangent. So cosecant and cotangent have the same domains because you have the same coordinate in the denominator. The ranges of secant and cosecant are the same as each other, and you'll see that they're the flipped of sine and cosine. So remember, secant is the reciprocal of cosine, and cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So if you flip outwards those ranges of sine and cosine, you end up with the ranges of secant and cosecant. So make sure you have all of these domains and ranges written down in your notes. So here are some more properties that we've been talking about. Reciprocal identities, we've been talking about this since the beginning. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so therefore it's the same thing as 1 over sine. Secant is equal to 1 over cosine of theta, and cotangent of theta is 1 over tangent of theta. So we've been talking about that since last section since we first introduced these trig functions. Some other ones that we haven't been as explicit about. Tangent of theta is the same thing as sine of theta divided by cosine of theta. Sine is y over r, cosine is x over r, those r's cancel, you get y over x, which is tangent. And then similarly, cotangent is the reciprocal of that. It's the cosine of theta divided by the sine of theta. So these are some reciprocal identities and some quotient identities that you should have memorized. 
This next set of identities is called the Pythagorean identities. I would pause the video and write these down. So the most important identity that you should have memorized of the Pythagorean identities is the first one. If you have this first memorized, sine squared of theta plus cosine of squared of theta is equal to one memorized, you can derive the other two. So for instance, if you know that you want, you have a secant squared, secant is one over cosine. So if you take the original one and you divide every single thing by cosine squared of theta, sine squared of theta over cosine squared of theta well, we just said that sine divided by cosine is tangent, so this is a tangent squared of theta. Cosine squared divided by cosine squared is 1, and 1 divided by cosine we just talked about, that is secant squared. So now we've derived the second one. So again, all you need to really have is this first one memorized, and then you could derive the other two. Similarly, with the last one, if you start with the original Pythagorean identity, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, but you need a cosecant, so 1 divided by sine is cosecant, so divide everything by sine squared. Sine squared over sine squared is 1. Cosine squared over sine squared is cotangent squared. And 1 over sine squared is cosecant squared. So if you're going to only memorize one, just memorize the first one and know how to derive the other two. So now a little bit of review. I want you to use the unit circle to find the exact value, so using the x and y coordinate ratios, Find the exact value of these three trig functions. So using your x and y coordinates and unit circle r being 1, the ratios we have here are your three answers. For the next part, we want to know where theta lies given this information. So these are this is a typical type of problem. They're trying to tell you what quadrant the angle's in. So if sine of theta is less than 0, they're trying to tell you that y over r is less than 0. r is a radius. Is that ever going to be less than 0? That's always going to be positive since it's a radius. So that gives you that y is less than 0. So if you know y is less than 0 and you're looking at a coordinate plane, you know that you have to be on the bottom, either quadrants 3 or 4. The next part says that cosine theta is greater than 0. So that's x over r is greater than 0. Again, r is always greater than 0, so this is telling you that x is greater than 0. So if x is positive, that you means you're on the right side in either quadrants 1 or 4. So here you have that your x-coordinate is positive and your y-coordinate is negative. That must mean you're in quadrant 4. So now they give you two trig functions and they want you to find the other four. They give you sine, which is y over r, and cosine, which is x over r. So looking at this information, we can tell that we have a coordinate point of 2 root 5 comma root 5, and we have a radius of 5. So given that information, pause the video and find the other four trig functions. So given that information, you end up with tangent is y over x, so you get 1 half. And then the other three, I just took the reciprocals. Cotangent would be 2. Cosine would be 5 over 2 root 5. And sin cosecant would be 5 over root 5. This next part down here, they want you to use your trig functions, your properties that you know. So go ahead and pause the video and try and simplify this. So on this one, what they're trying to get you to do is recognize that 1 over secant is the same thing as cosine, so that means 1 over secant squared is the same thing as cosine squared. So now we have sine squared of some angle, we don't care what it is, plus cosine squared of the same angle, and that's now a Pythagorean identity, sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. We don't care what the angle is, it doesn't matter, as long as they're the same, this identity holds true. This last type of problem that you're going to see is they give you one trig function and then another piece of information. And they want you to find the other five trig functions. So when you're doing problems like this, you want to draw a triangle. So trig is based on triangles. So we want to draw a triangle. If we have sine is one third, that means sine is positive. So if sine is positive, that means your y over r is positive. If y over r is positive, r is always positive, 
So that means that y is positive. So we're somewhere in the top half of the coordinate plane. The second part says that cosine of theta is negative. That means x over r is negative. Well, r is always positive, so that means x is negative, which means we're on the left half, so we have to be in quadrant 2. So I'm going to draw a triangle in quadrant 2, given the information that we know. Okay, We know that sine is y over r, so that means our y-coordinate is 1, and our r, our radius, is 3. So how are we going to find our x-coordinate? So we have a right triangle, which means we should use Pythagorean theorem. So go ahead and pause the video and use Pythagorean theorem to find your x-coordinate. So you should end up with negative 2 root 2. The reason I picked negative 2 root 2 is because I know that my x-coordinate is going to be negative. So make sure if you drop that negative, a lot of times you end up dropping it for the whole thing. So now you have x, negative 2 root 2, y is 1, and r is 3. Pause the video and find the other five trig functions. So using the x, y, and r that we found, here are your other five trig functions. So the big point of this, these types of problems when it's not a unit circle problem is to make sure you draw your triangle. You don't care what theta is. Just make sure you draw your triangle and make sure you draw it in the correct quadrant. So we knew this was quadrant 2 because sine was positive, which means y is positive, and cosine, which means x, was negative. So that's quadrant 2. So the last property we need to talk about is even and odd properties. So here I drew a little picture with theta having some x and y coordinate and some radius r and negative theta, so we went down instead of going up, having the same radius, and then x and y coordinates. So because they go out the same distance in the x direction, they have the same x coordinate, but instead of going up a distance of y, we went down a distance of y, so it has a negative y coordinate. So sine of theta would be y over r, but sine of negative theta would be negative y over r. So that means sine of negative theta is equal to negative sine of theta. So is sine even or odd? Sine is odd. Sine of negative theta is equal to negative sine of theta. Cosine, cosine of theta is x over r. Well, cosine of negative theta we still have an x-coordinate of x, so that's still just x over r. So cosine of negative theta is just equal to cosine of theta. So is cosine even or odd? Cosine is even. So cosine is even, sine is odd. Sine of negative theta is negative sine of theta. Cosine of negative theta is equal to positive cosine of theta. These are all properties. Make sure you have them all written down in your notes. They're going to be important pieces of information that are going to come up throughout the next couple chapters in trig.